Hi everyone, I'm Abhishek Sin and today I'm going to present our paper Fundamental Limits on the Regret of Online Network Caching. This is a joint work with my students Rajeshri Bhattacharji and Shubhangar Banerjee at IIT Madras. In a content distribution network, contents are geo-duplicated in different edge servers across the globe. The objective of this exercise is to improve latency by maximizing the average hit rates. Since the edge servers typically have smaller storage capacity than the main data centers, only a fraction of files may be stored in them. The objective of the number of network caching problem is to make optimal decisions about which files to cache in the edge servers in the next caching period. Major video service providers such as Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime uses network caching as one of their main tools to meet the quality of service requirements. The caching problem in general has been investigated in sufficient depth and breadth in the literature. However, the problem remains a very activity of research due to the exponential rise in the internet video traffic. Moreover, as we will discuss in the upcoming slides, the fundamental limits of network caching from an online learning point of view remains unexplored till date. To set the stage for our analysis, before we jump to the general network caching problem, let's consider the special case of a single caching problem. We considered a library consisting of n distinct files. We assume that a user is connected to a cache of capacity C. The cache, in turn, is connected to a data center which hosts all n files. The user requests one file per slot. If the file is present in the cache, we have a cache hit, yielding unit reward. Otherwise, we have a cache miss, and the user is routed to the data center for downloading the file. A cache miss yields zero rewards. Our goal is to design an online caching policy with the maximum hit rates. In our analysis, we make the following assumptions. We will be relaxing some of these assumptions in our numerical evaluation section. Generalized caching. Unlike the classical LRU and LFU policies, we do not impose any requirement to cache every item from the midstream. The policy may download any number of items subject to the cache capacity constraint per slot. Zero download cost and delay. We assume that downloading items from the remote server to the cache is instantaneous and it doesn't incur any cost. Obviously, it is a strong assumption and we will be investigating the effect of relaxing this assumption in our numerical evaluations. Uniform file sizes and negligible coding overhead. We assume that all files to have a unit size. Moreover, coding overhead, if it is applicable, is assumed to be negligible. Unlike the classical objective of minimizing the competitive ratios, here we investigate the regret optimal algorithms. The motivation for this objective comes from very recent empirical results on poor performance of LRU-like policies in large-scale content distribution networks. Next, we formulate the problem. The cached content is denoted by an n-dimensional vector yt. Each component of yt, for the case of uncoded caching, could be either 0 or 1, that's binary. For the case of coded caching, it could be any number between 0 and 1. The component, each component of yt represents the fraction of the files in the case of coded caching and whether the existence of the files in the case of uncoded caching the set of all admissible caching configuration at time t is given by the set of all y in 0 comma 1 n such that sum of yf is upper bounded by c this simply represents the cache capacity constraints and since the cache has capacity of c you can't store more than c files coded or uncoded per slot for the case of heat rate we denote the request vector at time t by the variable xt. xt is an n-dimensional vector 
each of whose components are either 0 and 1. And since a user requests only one file per slot, only one component of xt is 1, the rest are 0. Hence, the heat rate for the given incoming request vector xt and the caching configuration yt is simply given by the dot product. That is qxt yt, which is the reward obtained per slot, is given to be xt dot yt. Our objective is to maximize the total heat rate over a given interval of length t. So qxt and yt, the sequence of xt and the sequence of yt, it represents the total reward over the time t and it decomposes as a sum of the rewards obtained per slot. Q is sum of qxt yt over t equal to 1 to t. Next we define the regret, the notion of regret. Since the request sequence is adversarial, it is infeasible to just maximize the heat rate because the adversary can choose whatever request sequence it wants. So at every slot, in principle, it can make the any caching algorithm to yield zero reward. So what do we do? So following the framework of online learning, we set out to minimize the regret instead. Regret is the difference between the rewards obtained by the best static caching configuration and that of an online policy. In other words, we define first define the conditional regret corresponding to our request sequence xt as follows. It is simply the difference in the reward that is qxt y star and qxt yt pi, where pi is a given policy, and we take that difference. And since we optimize over all static policies, this quantity is optimized, maximized over y star, over the set of all feasible caching configuration. The regret for a particular policy pi is simply defined to be the worst case re conditional regret and the supremum is taken over all possible request sequence xt. We now propose a new follow the part of leader based caching policy. This is how it works. We first initialize an n dimensional count vector, which corresponds to the number of files request corresponding to each file up to time t. Also, we set the variable leader to the value shown. At every slot t, we update the count vector as new file requests arrive. Then we part up the count vector by adding Gaussian noise of variance eta square to the count vector. The components of the Gaussian noise are assumed to be independent, so it is a white Gaussian noise. Finally, we load the cache with the C files having the highest part up count. We prove the proposed FTPL policy is a sublinear regret with the expected regret bounded by the following. That is, we show that the expected regret of the FTPL policy over an interval of length t is give upper bounded by 1.51 log n to the power 1 by 4 square root of ct. The proof uses a recent result by Cohen et al. And it is given in the paper. Next, a natural question is whether we can actually do better. That is, whether the regret bound obtained by the FTPL policy can be improved. However, we prove a regret lower bound that shows that for any online caching policy for a library size n and a caching capacity c with n larger than or equal to 2c is lower bounded by square root of ct by 2 pi minus some constant divided by root t. And this is a non asymptotic regret bound which is valid for any t larger than or equal to 1. Its proof uses a new probabilistic result in the balls into beans framework of the classical probability theory. And this, uh, we are going to describe it next. So consider the following setup. As in that t balls are thrown independently and uniformly at random into two C beans. Let the random variable MCT denote the number of balls in the most populated C beans. Then we actually show that expected load in the most populated CBs, that is expected value of MCT, is lower bounded by t by 2 plus square root of ct by 2 pi minus again constant divided by root t. The proof proceeds by pairing up the beans to form super beans and then selecting the most occupied bean in each super bean to obtain a lower bound for MCT. 
the details are given in the paper next we come to the second part of our talk where do we consider a bipartite caching network in the bipartite caching problem we have a set of user given by the set i and a set of cache of each of capacity c given by the set j the connection between the users and the caches are represented by a bipartite graph with the edge set e we also assume that for the sake of simplicity that the right degree of this bipartite network is given by d we consider two different types of contents in the case of bipartite network <clears throat> the first thing is that we allow coded caching that is files may be encoded by a rateless erasure code for example a raptor code hence a file may be decoded by combining enough number of encoded bits again the contents could be of two types the first is elastic and the second one being inelastic this is how they are defined receiving multiple layers for example resolutions of an elastic content improve its overall utility example of elastic content being multi resolution hd videos where as you would see more layers that is a more resolutions of an hd video the viewing experience gets better on the other hand receiving multiple copies of an inelastic content does not increase its overall utility these are standard databases documents standard web pages static web pages files etc accordingly we have to de define two different types of reward functions for the case of elastic content the reward function obtain per slot is defined to be for the case of request when the request vector is given by xt and the caching configuration for all the j caches are given by yt is defined to be sum of over all user i xti dot sum of all ytj for over all the caches j connected to the user i given by the h set e as you can see the reward increases linearly with the number of components received that is a particular user can combine the files to all its connected caches and it can get it can get as much reward as possible given by all these uh, connected caches on the other hand the reward for the inelastic case is defined to be sum of xti dot product with minimum of all one vector and sum of ytj over all caches j connected to the user i so here there is a cap there is a upper bound of the reward that the user i can obtain the reward function is non linear in the caching configuration vector y and bounded above by 1 so it clearly takes into account the inelastic nature of the content in our paper we consider reward functions of both of these forms next we uh, prove uh, the achievability results the achievability results are divided in two parts one for the coded caching another for the uncoded caching for the case of coded caching the first theorem states that the online gradient based coded caching policy proposed by georgius et al in a previous paper achieves the regret bound given by d mod j square root of 2 ct and this regret bound is valid for both elastic and inelastic content the second achievability theorem concerns uncoded caching for inelastic contents it states that by employing the ftpl policy at each of the j caches individually yields the expected regret bound 1.51 log n to the power 0.25 d mod j square root of ct the proof of the second theorem again uses a result by cohen et al next uh, we come to the regret lower bounds that uses make use of extensively makes use of our previous balls into beans framework the lower bounds are also divided into two different categories for inelastic content and for the inelastic content 
The first theorem states that for caching elastic content with n larger than or equal to 2c, the regret of any online policy pi is lower bounded by d mod j square root of c t by 2 pi minus constant divided by root t. For the case of inelastic content with n larger than or equal to 2c j, we show that the regret of any online caching policy pi is lower bounded as d square root of mod j c t divided by 2 pi minus constant divided by root t. For all t greater than or equal to one, the proof of both theorems effectively make use of the balls in the beans lemma and is given in the paper. Finally, we come to our experimental evolution section. We use a well-known movie lens one million dataset for our experimental purpose. This dataset contains around one billion ratings for around three thousand seven hundred movies, along with the timestamps of the rating. These ratings are given by around six thousand unique users. A histogram of the request frequency is shown below. This slide shows the relative performance of the FTPL policy compared to other baseline policies in terms of regret and heat ratios. From the first plot, we see that FTPL performs significantly better than LRU. and operates very close to the theoretical lower bound from the second plot we see that the ftpl policy achieves a heat rate of 80% when the cache size is only 30% of the library size this is a big improvement compared to the library policy even for the case of bipartite caching we observed similar performance figure as for the single cache setting note that In our analysis, we didn't associate any cost with downloading new files from the remote server to the cache. Obviously, this is a strong assumption. To study the effect of the number of new downloads versus hit rates, in the next experiment, we generate a synthetic periodic traffic with a library of size five in the single cache setting with of capacity two. Clearly, from the figures. the average number of new downloads increases with increase in the awg and noise level eta the plots show that by controlling the variance of added noise we can strike a nice balance between the cost of downloading and the hit rates finally we come to the conclusion of our talk so with limited storage space we have investigated the fundamental limits of caching algorithms with and without coding we all have obtained the following results we have derived tight finite time regret lower bound for bipartite caching network we have developed efficient caching policies which perform well both in theory and in practice in the process we have derived a fundamental result on the balls and beans problem a central framework of probability theory for any questions on this on the material of this talk please drop me an email at abhishek.sinha at e.iitm.ac.in and i'll be happy to answer